The refugee crisis has been the largest global problem for the past three years, and Spain has been complicit in the chaos. For 17 of the MDPI quantifies that Spain has only accepted 4% of its share of 17,000 refugees, leading the UGT 16 to conclude that at the current rate it will take Spain 600 years to fulfill the refugee quota. Hoffman 16 of Vice News finds that Spain's inaction prevents regions who want to help, like Catalonia, from doing so, as only the Spanish federal government can authorize refugee intake. Failing to act is not an option, as Malcolm of the European Commission warns that because refugee camps are underfunded and located in conflict zones, resettlement is a matter of life or death. Fortunately, an independent Catalonia would give thousands of new opportunities. Catalonia has declared that if given independence, they would accept substantially more refugees in Spain. Already, Verifaca 17 and Stockholm University reports that Catalonia has built housing facilities for 15,000 refugees, but Spain has denied them entry. Convention 2 is breaking the cycle. As Alexander 17 of the Telegraph recounts, Catalonia was once an independent country with its own language, laws, and customs. However, since its forced annexation by Spain in the 15th century, Catalans have fought numerous wars of secession, killing millions. These continuous conflicts will only intensify for two reasons. First, rad radicalization. Box 17 of Financial Times reports that radicals fiercely pushing for independence are replacing moderates in the movement, ensuring the fight continues. The Catalans will become more radical with time as Gonzalez 17 of Foreign Policy warns that support for independence is stronger among youth, ensuring the movement will continue to gain traction. 4017 of the Jacobin Magazine explains that neither pro-independence party will slow its efforts as both parties attempt to outdo the other in order to avoid losing ground. Dygoff 16 of Paris University concludes that even if secession leaders claim to support reform, their end goal has always been a hidden agenda of full independence. Second, Spanish crackdowns. Minder of New York Times reports last week that unbridgeable polarization guarantees a long-term conflict in which a new round of turmoil seems certain. That turmoil is here. As Jensen of Reuters reports on Monday that the Catalan parliament nominated the currently exiled Puigdemont as leader, and in response, Spain will reimpose direct rule over Catalonia with Article 155. Problematically, Prado 17 of the University of Oxford writes that direct rule would spark new waves of violence. Gutierrez 17 of CSU Montreal Bay observes that Spain's measures to suppress independence will only fuel the secession movement in the long term. Thus, Balfour 17 of Foreign Policy warns that no form of mediation will bridge the divide between Catalonia and Spain. Year 17 of NYU writes that self-determination is unstoppable and no power can indefinitely prevent any group from eventually gaining independence, regardless of how difficult it might be and how long it takes. The solution is simple. Spain should grant Catalonia independence. Castells 13 of the University of Barcelona explains that outcomes differ when independence is achieved amicably compared to unilateral secession. He confirms that a bilateral split is key to guaranteeing political and economic stability. As Betancourt 13 of Durham University explains, an amicable divorce resulting from Spain's acceptance of independence would lead to a peaceful resolution and negotiation of all outstanding issues. In this way, affirming prevents perpetual conflict. Paris 17 of Leicester University explains that the Catalan crisis is more likely than not to spark civil war and widespread death. Even if conflict is avoided now, Carrie 17 of the Oriental Review writes that Catalonia is a frozen conflict, a phenomenon which William 16 of American University explains is the result of deep cultural differences that persist for centuries despite numerous attempts at reform. Paul Tan of Newsweek explains that frozen conflicts drive on through cycles of stalemates and ceasefires, preventing political victories from translating to stability. This is because, as Hero 6 of UC Boulder explains, while agreements may signal short-term peace, down the line the preferences of parties are likely to change to the point where agreements can be ripped up at a moment's notice, causing conflict to reignite. Only a permanent solution guarantees peace, as Chair concludes that peacefully agreed upon borders are rarely fought over. Thus, we affirm. Jackie and I negate results. Spain should grant Catalonia its independence. Our first contention is the rise of the far right. Barrow in 2017 explains that unlike other European countries, Spain's far right has been hugely fragmented since the start of the 1980s. As a result, the country's national parliament has not had any far right lawmakers since 1982. This disunity allows more moderate parties like Rojoy's popular party to capture most of the far right vote. Tourist 2017 details. The biggest factor that links far-right parties is the ruling popular parties largely unchallenged hegemony among far-right Spaniards. It is estimated that more than 80% of people who describe themselves as far-right voted for Rajoy in the past two national elections. The status quo allows Rajoy to appeal to both moderates and far-right voters, keeping far-right parties from gaining political power while still negotiating with Catalonia. Unfortunately, granting Catalonia independence makes the far-right even stronger. Kingsley 2017 writes, 
If the response from Rapoi against the Catalans is perceived to be too weak, there is definitely more probability of a party appearing from the extreme right that defends far-right nationalism. The impact is increased xenophobia. Bach 2016 explains, the far-right advocates for a strict Spaniards first policy and wants refugees out of Spain and Spain out of the EU. Newton 2017 confirms, these groups wish to preserve the cultural purity of white majority regions and are considered Islamophobic. Our second contention is Spain's pain. Catalonia currently makes up 20% of Spain's economy, meaning that a split would increase unemployment in two ways. The first is through membership in financial organizations. CNN in 2017 explains that if Catalonia was forced to independently apply for EU membership, it would have to convince all of the bloc's current members to agree, including Spain. Because of this, there is no practical way for Catalonia to become an independent country within the EU. Dropping out of the bloc would likely raise the cost of exporting goods produced in Catalonia to EU members and other nations. BBC in 2017 explains that countries like France have refused to recognize the independence movement and have threatened to expel Catalonia from the EU because they fear that EU membership will encourage internal secessionist movements. This means that import prices will go up as companies struggle to maintain profit margins with new tariffs. More importantly, businesses may decide to relocate from Catalonia to other EU countries in order to stay in the Eurozone and avoid tariffs. Erickson from the Washington Post concludes that because of worries about Catalan membership in financial organizations, more than 2,700 firms have moved their headquarters from the region. As companies leave Catalonia, unemployment increases, which is why Babcock from the Telegraph explains that as a result of the Catalan crisis, 15,000 people have become unemployed. Second is through a loss of tax revenue. Boss 2017 explains that Spain would lose about 16 billion euros yearly in the case of a split, as Catalonia would no longer have to pay taxes to Spain. This would then result in a loss of about 2% to the Spanish GDP. As the government is unable to finance public works projects, subsidize businesses, and generate economic growth, unemployment increases. This is why Sanchez in 2012 confirms that a 1% decrease in GDP has been associated with a 2 percentage point increase in the unemployment rate. The impact is saving lives. Unemployment directly leads to the loss of life because unemployed people often don't have the money to access critical medical services and resources which is why Patrick Leahy from the Huffington Post explained that unemployment increases the rate of mortality by 279% among men and 107% among women. Thus, we negate. Um, what uh, do you agree with that last part talking about? The last part? Yeah, it's like it's Jen. What? Okay, I think that's that part. Okay, so your part about unemployment leading to mortality, the warrant there is access to health services. Is this correct? Uh, not just health services, but yeah. That's, that's the one you read in case. Yeah, are there any others? Yeah. What so are like, like poverty is just like generally like you don't have mm -hmm. access to like any resources. But like, like specific to mortality, so wait, people are starving to death or is it mainly yeah, health? Yeah, I think it's in Spain. Like, there are like many different links into poverty. Okay, my main question here is like, like so countries have different affordability for healthcare. For example, sure. Spanish healthcare is much more affordable than American healthcare. I just want to make sure the card's not from America. It sounds like it might be. Yeah. Okay. Do you know where the card's from? Probably America. But okay, the money thanks. is still there. So let's look to you guys. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about refugees. Sure. Is these 17,000 refugees that Spain's supposed to be accepting, where are they coming from? Uh, I'm sure you can tell. Yeah, so they're coming from countries like Greece and Italy, right? And yeah, the reason they're arriving, refugee camps. Right, but the reason they're arriving at Spain is because they're part of a European Union relocation program. Yeah. So in order for Catalonia to be able to accept any of these refugees, don't they have to be a member of the European Union? No. First? You don't have to accept, you don't have to be a part of the EU to accept refugees. For example, the US accepts refugees all the time. We accept yeah, thousands I, a year. Well, like, so yeah, it's like, maybe it's but not those reason? same refugees, the 70,000, but what we can tell you is that the minute you vote affirmative, Catalonia accepts yeah, 15,000 well, refugees. Sense. So when we talk about like refugees from Syria, geographically, sure. when refugees come up from Syria, sure. where do they enter Europe? I'm, again, I'm sure you're From countries telling. like Greece and Italy. So unless okay. you have a European Union relocation program in Then how do they get to America? No I'm to confused. How, are, are there no, and are they, how do they get to America if you have to be an EU country to accept refugees? That just doesn't I mean, make I'm sense. I'm sure America has their own policies in place. Okay, but I'm sure Catalonia will put its own policies in place too. It's already committed to use that. It's already and after Catalonia law. is trying to like become their own independent nation. Why is their number one priority not setting up their own oh, foreign policy? I'm not necessarily saying, I'm not necessarily saying 
saying it's the number one priority, but here's what we are saying. They already have 100% of the infrastructure in place necessary 100%. to accept. 100%? Yes. Like to, what? Yes. Okay, for example, they have built 15,000 houses for the RGs. They have doctors and psychologists on standby. Um, I think there are food banks. I, I could go on, but I don't think it's necessary. So they're prepared for something that Spain yes. has already told them, like, we're not going to let you pass. Yes, but when they're independent, Spain can't tell them that anymore. Can I get a question? Yeah. Okay, so you talk about all these firms relocating and these 15,000 jobs lost. Isn't that happening right now because they're not sure whether Catalonia is going to become independent, like uncertainty? Okay. So we're telling you that right now they're leaving Catalonia mm -hmm. because they're scared of not being part of EU, yeah. like the EU. But okay. once you have a firm, those suspicions are guaranteed. So any businesses that decide to hedge their that. bets and stay in Catalonia, yeah. if their suspicions are confirmed, so that's when I they have to ask about that. Numbers. All of your EU evidence, it's, in the, it's talking about secession, right? Not Spain granting Catalonia. No, it's talking about any type of independence. Oh, I'd like to see it after Ross. Yeah, sure. I think that's Start with observation or evidence is talking about secession uh, being unilateral. When you affirm it's a bilateral agreement, we're going to talk about that later, but it's an important distinction. First of all, my first mention. Gunterman notes that nationalist leaders are incentivized to start disputes with the Spanish government to turn Catalonia towards independence. Kingsley notes that nationalist movements feed off of each other. The escalation of Catalan nationalism in turn fuels nationalism. This A functions as a link into secession being inevitable. B, the implication is that granting independence uh, is the incentive for nationalists when we solve back for their harms. They recognize that uh, conservative policies are already extremely prominent because of the ongoing political crisis. Faber, over in college, writes that the question of Catalonia allows Spain's ruling conservative party to appeal. Spanish nationalists who, who turn out to uh, vote in large numbers only because of the Catalan crisis. Thus, the Economist 2017 concludes that the sole reason conservatives win elections today is because of their explicit anti independence platform. However, granting independence means that conservatives can no longer leverage this political crisis to whip up votes and maintain control. This is incredibly important. It's called the Christian Science Monitor writes that these conservatives use more draconian austerity policies that decimate social spending and increase poverty in their world. In fact, the Center for Economic and Social Rights finds that because of these policies, 13 million people are in poverty and a quarter of all children are at risk of uh, malnutrition. malnutrition. This is important for two reasons. First, austerity measures being being implemented by conservatives are already present in Spain not making their impact, but second, the only risk of ending current austerity regime is by uh, removing the power of the right-wing nationalists by affirming, then go to the EU argument. A couple things. First, an amicable divorce stalls. Hedge comes up into the Irish Times finds that if Spain recognized an independent Catalonia would court of an amicable agreement under which EU rights are maintained. Second, Golly 13 of the University of Barcelona finds that Catalonia would get de facto membership post independence to minimize harsh with Catalonia and Spain in the transition process uh, because it would be bad for all parties. That's why it's not going to happen. But then third, let's dive deeper. Castells of the University of Barcelona concludes that if Catalonia gained independence, the EU would be forced to accept them for a number of reasons. First, a debt disaster. Calvo explains that Spain would be unable to solve its national debt without Catalonia. Spain defaulted on its debt. The entire Eurozone would be threatened because of this. The EU will be forced to accept them. Second, the Catalonian corridor. Castells observed that a large percentage of freight that enters the EU passes through Catalonia to maintain this trade. They're going to have to accept them. But third is saving the EU. Pentecorte of Georgetown University finds that the EU's inflexibility and determination to centralize and consolidate nations and cultures without regards to regional diversity makes it vulnerable to socioeconomic volatility, dooming it to inevitable failure. Fortunately, affirming as a risk of solvency, Vera Flacus finds that Catalonian independence is a golden opportunity to recharacterize the EU's mission to become one that is more flexible and open to regional diversity by giving Catalonia what it is asking for. The EU then will signal the populist to regional movements that of the EU's outdated conception of sovereignty has evolved, mitigating collapses outweighs their case because if the EU collapses, all 28 member states do magnifying their unemployment harms by 28 times when you affirm them a risk of solvency, but at best, in non unique solar offense. Then, despite that, even if Catalonia is not giving formal membership, Catalonia can access EU memberships in a few ways, uh, benefits in a few ways. First, market access. Castells explains that regardless of whether or not Catalonia was an EU member, it would still be able to participate in Europe's single market, maintaining current free trade conditions. So, even if members veto, it doesn't matter. Second is compromise. The BBC explains that Catalonia could be a single market member, meaning they pay for access to EU benefits without formally becoming members. Then on uncertainty and capital flight, two responses. Realize or one response. Realize the current uncertainty over the direction of Catalonia as a nation is the root cause of capital flight. Castells finds that the current conflict between Spain and Catalonia has lacked any sort of clear dialogue on what's going to happen, which is why Renal finds that the uncertainty over the movement is paralyzing all investments in this quote. Negating doesn't do anything, but there's a risk of solvency when you affirm, because when you affirm, you sh uh, show people what's going to happen and you decrease the uncertainty. Then on Spain, a couple of things. First, SNL of the University of London finds that independence helps Spain because in order to follow their independence movements, it would trigger economic development and modernization across the other Spanish municipalities. Second, this is really important. Spain or the Asian Times finds that due to an aging workforce that will break the national budget, the Spanish economy will implode within the next 20 years. The implication is that A, Catalonia should get out now to avoid a uh, lower dependency on Spain, and uh, there's a risk of solvency, but B, all their offense is not unique because when Spain collapses in 20 years, unemployment's going to skyrocket. So you vote for us on face, but then uh, realize that uh, economic partnerships solve. Paluzzi finds that if Catalonia remained within the Eurozone and maintained relatively free trade with Spain, there would not be a substantial toll in either country. At the end of the day, all their offense is not unique. You vote out on a risk of solvency on face, and then on job loss, realize that we're going to create more jobs in Catalonia with independence that are being lost in the status quo for two reasons. The first is new state, new opportunities. Pedro
you all find that right now, Catalonia's economy is relatively small over in Catalonia would become an independent state. It would have to build its public sector and government, which alone would create 71,000 jobs far away in their job loss. But second, more money. A spot at the University of Barcelona values the additional costs and benefits of independence and finds they would see a fiscal gain equivalent to 7% of the GDP. That's important to the cause of fines. But the fiscal gain would have a multiplier effect on the economy as it could be used to increase public spending, which would have a positive effect on productive capacity, creating new jobs. At the end of the day, the economy is better in our world, but in their world, it's going to collapse anyway. So you vote for us on face. In spreading, he loses the warrants to a lot of his attacks. The first attack he gives you on Spanish nationalism is he tells you that anti-independence is the reason why conservative parties win. But realize that anti-independence sentiment doesn't go away when you affirm. In fact, we tell you it gets stronger because now you send the message that we're always being weak. Go down to Spain, pay a couple things. Group their first two responses together because they're just telling you that an amicable split means that the EU now has a sudden economic interest in getting Catalonia into the EU. But the BBC card is really explicit in telling you that countries like France don't want Catalonia to join the EU because of internal secessionist movements. That's really problematic because when they don't interact with the internal Warrants, that means that they're literally winning black hole Catalonia from joining into the EU. But that, that at that point, when France is preserving its political unity over the economic health of the EU, that's going to be really important. But that, go to the third thing. They tell you that Spain's debt is going to be really bad. First, they tell you that Spain's debt means that the EU will accept Catalonia. There's literally no war to this. The EU's just going to bail out Spain. Why do they have to accept Catalonia? Then they say that all trade goes to Catalonia. This makes absolutely no sense. This trade can just move somewhere else. But third, they tell you saving the EU is really important because the EU can take advantage of the Catalan crisis. But realize, there are parts of that the EU should take advantage of it. But the point where the EU isn't taking advantage of it, they're not passing any of the reforms that the cards say they should pass, realize there's no probability link onto this card. Then link their, then group their first two or their last two responses. They tell you that Catalonia can just adopt a single access market policy. But realize that type of policy won't work if the other end isn't willing to engage in that policy. That's the internal warrant into the BBC card. Let's go on to their case. Go to the first potential refugee. A couple responses. First, realize the economy is the internal link because without a good economy, Catalonia won't have the infrastructure to support all these refugees. But then Skim Asset tells you that when I'm Employment goes up, anti-refugee sentiment goes up, meaning that you're going to change the sentiment in Catalonia in the long term. But second, realize that Barcelona is currently requesting 2.3 million euros from Spain, and they say social services that poor refugees are facing a lot of pressure. At that point, if they leave Spain, they literally won't be able to get this funding, meaning that their entire refugee integration program will collapse. But third, this is really short term, because Miguel tells you that the pro-refugee Ciudadanos party is literally about to be elected, and that means you prefer this time frame over theirs, because it's going to take a lot less time to elect Ciudadanos than it is to get Catalonia things like border security gotten up. With the New York Times telling you, by the way, that Catalonia doesn't have a border security, so it can't vet refugees. So it's completely false when they say that one of Catalonia is 100 percent of this infrastructure. But then fourth, the local tells you that Catalonia, Spain has already accepted 6,855 refugees, meaning that the rate of acceptance is increasing. But fifth, realize that the reason why these refugees are coming to Spain is because of a relocation program. That's really important because if Catalonia is not part of the EU, it literally can't participate in the relocation program. The refugees aren't coming from Syria, they're coming from Italy and Greece. But then go down to the first second uh, second contention about breaking the cycle. Go to the first one about radicalization. Two responses. The first is that young people just tend to be more liberal. As they grow older and realize the economic harms of a split, they'll start becoming anti-independent. But the second response from, is from El Pais that tells you that a lot of the rhetoric surrounding the younger generation makes it a bigger point. Because multiple surveys have shown that younger people especially disagree with the independence referendum. That's going to be really important because when the younger generation are shying away from independence, they have absolutely no link. But then go to the second one about Spanish crackdown. A couple things here. First, the Deutsche Welle tells you that Spain has already pulled out the police that are responsible for the October First referendum mean that we're literally falling back in the status quo. There's literally going to be no violence because there's nobody to oppress them. But second, the LA Times tells you that Rajoy says he's going to lift Article 155 when a new Catalan government is formed. Their card is just saying that if Carlos Puigdemont is elected, then like Rajoy is just going to continue to continue pushing for Article 155. But realize that hasn't happened. Rajoy's already lifted Article 155. He's already instituted talks with Catalonia. But then the third card, the third response is going to be the combination of Reuters and the Guardian. Reuters tells you that less than 25% of Catalans actually want independence. They're just voting for independence because they want autonomy. That's really critical because the Guardian explains that Rajoy is already willing to offer fiscal autonomy, meaning that we're always selling back. But fourth, Euro News tells you that the situation will never grow violent because Catalans have already realized that if they use violence, they're going to lose what little international support they, what they have. That's really important because if Catalans really are desperate for independence, they should be shying away from violence, not actually supporting it. But finally, realize that their impact should have manifested already. Realize that if Catalans are so anxious about getting independence, but we've literally seen no violence from October 2nd and now, meaning that ask them how long it's going to take before civil war breaks out. But finally, turn it because affirming would create political fragmentation. Realize that the pro unity and anti unity parties in Catalonia are really fragmented right now. If you form, it only creates an instable, inst unstable government promoting a ground for violence. Cool. Uh, you ready? Okay. Yeah. Can I have a question? Go for it. So, on your evidence about France and the EU, mm -hmm. 
we, we call it the Reddish Catalonia. Yeah. It okay. says that, like, that's analyzing a scenario in which Catalonia secedes unilaterally. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say unilateral anywhere in there. It says but declaration it says of independence. independence. Right. But the internal warrant is that France doesn't want to encourage its own secessionist movement. Okay, but what does so it mean? Doesn't. Wait, what does it hey, mean? Can I finish my answer? What, what, really, what does it mean to secede? Can I finish my answer? The card doesn't say secede. It just says, word for word, France will oppose a declaration of independence by Catalonia, right? But the internal warrant as to why France opposes this is because it doesn't want to encourage internal secessionist movements. So it doesn't matter if this is like the, if the independence is legal or not. France is so scared about secessionist movements that they're going to oppose Catalonia joining the EU. Can I have a question? Yeah. Okay. Let's go on to like this idea about a Spanish crackdown, right? So yeah. if a Spanish crackdown is going to fuel like a civil war, are the past incidents of crackdown enough to trigger your impact, or does it have to continue? Uh, well, that's like not really the point. Like, the link isn't like. But can you just what, answer my question? Well, like, can you just answer my question? Okay, cool. It's not that like the it's not like that one instance of a crackdown like leads mm -hmm. to a civil war. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that like like this war is more short term. It's the idea that like if Article One Fifty Five gets reimposed again, that will like bring so there needs to be like a continuation. It'll bring about new oppression. waves of violence. Okay. But yeah, in the long term, what okay. Gutierrez says that's going to okay. increase the drive for the so, secession. I have a really quick follow up. Okay. So if the imposition of Article One Fifty Five is going to trigger violence. Why don't we see any violence after Rafoy initially imposed Because it went away like after three weeks, two and a half weeks. It wasn't three weeks. How it was two was months. It? Okay, it was two months. Okay, so how long is it going to take if like Wait. Article 155 was imposed and violence didn't happen for two months? Mm -hmm. How long is it going to take for your impacts to manifest? I don't know exactly. But so if you don't to... know, how also, wait, it's not like wait, it's not like the last time Article 155 was imposed was an indication that it didn't happen, right? Like we in like after that we saw pro in an election that everybody was forecasting the Unity Party to win. We saw a pro independence party win. But so I would that's why you're late. Your impact is. I would I would contend that with its support for secession. That's no, no, no. no. Your, your impact is violent. Let's not get distracted. Well, don't tell me. So, that. I know what my case is. We okay, say violent. So your impact also, is violent. So how no, is Article 155? Instead of me telling you what my argument is, let me just remind you of the evidence we read in case that says that when Spain cracks down, that creates fuel for the secession movement in the long term. And you've asked okay, four so questions in a row. Can I take that one now? Go okay, cool. Let's talk about. Okay, yeah. You say that there hasn't been like a civil war over independence in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. How how have they fought like six wars so, in the course of history? Yeah, so great. This? this is like the question I was going to ask you anyway. Okay. So the Euronews card tells you that there's been a shift in Catalan thinking, and now they know that if they use violence, they will lose what, that, what little international support they have. Okay. That's why, unlike past movements, so this one is really So do the comparative way and says that the people who are so passionate about independence won't pursue it? Yeah, like the parties who are in control of like the pro-separatist yeah. parties of parliament the parliament don't want violence. Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you want to see it? Huh? You want to see that part? Uh, or... Yeah, please. Okay, yes. 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 It's going to be, um, it's going to be answering the fracturing turn, um, extending stuff in the bottle, and then, is everybody ready? Okay, they tell you the parties are going to disagree, but then they never tell you that that leads to violence. They themselves say that the parties are not going to be violent. Disagreement happens all the time in government. It doesn't matter. It's not a, it, there's no impact here. So now I'm going to my partner's rebuttal. Here's, here's something they dropped. Spangler. Our Spangler evidence tells you that it is inevitable that Spain is going to collapse in 20 years. All of their econ impacts of Spain don't matter. And here's where this actually generates offers for us. Remember what it tells you that Catalonia has to get out now to have any chance of saving its economy. That's a way to work for us right there. Um, they also drop they also drop the new market's turn. Our SML evidence says that 71,000 jobs are going to be created if Catalonia becomes independent. That's a straight turn on, on their um on their econ argument. They also drop the terminal defense we read you in case. Our mere evidence tells you that secession is inevitable. All their harms ultimately get triggered when Catalonia secedes. That's when they drop this terminal defense on their case. Okay, now, now moving on to voters. The first is the EU collapse. They don't respond to our bed card card that tells you that without Catalonia, the EU collapse is inevitable. Our bare office card says that Catalonia is a golden opportunity for the EU to save themselves. They say, oh, it only says the EU should do it. Yes, our bare, our bare focus card is to show you that it would fix the problem, and it still does that. Here's why the EU will. They drop the Catalan corridor reason. Catalonia has some very key infrastructure for European trade, and that's the reason they're going to be let in. But even if you don't want to buy that, remember our galley evidence that says they're, they're going to receive a de facto membership, which does not require 100% of other countries to go for them. And our hedge evidence about our ample that says that with, in 
in the, in the affirmative world, there's going to be an amicable divorce between Spain and Catalonia, which means they will get to the EU. Refer our evidence to theirs because it's specific to what's happening in the resolution. Their BBC evidence says if Catalonia declares independence, that's not what an amicable divorce is, that's not what the resolution is talking about, so you should drop their evidence. So remember, even if we don't solve for the EU, it's still terminal defense on our econ argument because we're seeing the economies of 28 countries collapsing. And if there's any risk of us solving that, that's going to be really big impact. The next thing is refugees. So they tell you that econ is, is the internal link. That's not true. The point where the infrastructure has already been built. Even if Catalonia had no money, the infrastructure would already be in place. It doesn't matter. That's our AL monitor card. All Palmer, all Palmer, our Palmer card is very explicit. It says that they can and they will accept the refugees tomorrow. The, the parliament has already passed a law stating that they're going to do this. At this point, you're getting a 100% probability of Catalonia accepting these 15,000 refugees. They say you have to be in the EU to accept refugees. One, we show you why there will be. Two, that's not true because the EU is accept refugees all the time. Vote affirmative. Okay, really quickly, can I speak out? That's going to be refugees in the United case. the first contention on refugees, she tries to tell you that Catalonia already has the infrastructure built. But realize if they don't have a stable economy, you can't just have empty houses. Refugees still need stuff like food aid and medical aid. That stuff doesn't solve, so it doesn't really matter if they take in refugees with empty houses if they can't actually help them. But then second, they drop two really crucial cards. First is Miguel, which tells you that CEO Donald's party is already slated to win the 2019 election, and they're very pro-refugee. Their impact is very short-term at best. But then second, the New York Times tells you that Catalonia doesn't have any border security, but before they can take in any refugees, they have to establish this first. Then go to Arcade, go to the economy. She tries to tell you that the Catalonia is for some reason going to get de facto membership. But realize that all the EU members have to agree before they can get the de facto membership. In, insofar as we tell you, the internal link is that France doesn't want to encourage internal secessionist movements. That, that means it doesn't matter how important Catalonia is, they're still going to prioritize their own political unity over the stability of the, of the European Union. But then they try to impact to economic to European Union collapse. But realize that their card doesn't actually say that the EU is going to completely collapse. It just says that the EU can't form a federal union. Realize that the impact really isn't as big as they're telling you it is. But even if you don't get don't buy EU, remember we still get offense off of Spain because we tell you that Spain loses sixteen billion dollars in taxes. That's really crucial be that because that increases unemployment in Spain. But she tries to tell you that uncertainty is the cause a uh, root cause of business leaving. But realize that this is uncertainty because they don't know if they're going to be in the European Union. Once Catalonia get grain gains independence, that uncertainty becomes a hundred percent the number of businesses leaving increases exponentially. She tries to tell you that like as they can generate all this economic development. But realize that if economic development was really that easy, then Spain would probably be a really prosperous country, not an economically struggling country. Then she tries to tell you that Spain collapse is inevitable. But realize that if Spain's, popu uh, if Spain's population is aging, that means Catalonia's population is aging too, because Catalonia is inherently a part of Spain. Catalonia seceding doesn't solve for anything. But then she tries to tell you that Catalonia can have all this economic stability. But remember, in order to increase economic investment, you have to have capital investment in the first place. Insofar as Catalonia doesn't have any foreign direct investment, because no one wants to encourage secessionist movements, that's why Lister tells you that FDI decreases by 75%, so they can't generate these jobs in the first place. At that point, we're the only team linking to unemployment, which leads to increase the rate of mortality by 279% in men and 107% in women. Would it be better to live in a refugee camp or in Catalonia post-independence? Like, I tell you both are really bad. Wait, like, are you telling me that an independent Catalonia could be the same thing as, like, living in a war zone? You gotta look at the fact that refugees... Hold on, they're not living in a war zone. Don't oh, try okay, to blow they, this impact up. You guys conceded that you're going to go Italy and Greece. Don't wait, try to blow this impact up. No, we didn't. We never conceded that. Wait, ever. you guys, we told like, you, you in response. you just read a response. All your response says is that there are refugees. Your own card tells me that the 17,000 refugees that aren't being com aren't coming yes. in are from yeah. Italy and Greece. But there are also That's more than that. Like, those aren't the only refugees So how many refugees are going to come in? There are, like, 200,000 refugees. In Catalonia, how many are coming in Spain, right now, it's 70,000. Wait, I can. They actually deported. They deport 90% of the people they so let in. Spain, Spain does. So, when like, Spain deports refugees, they don't support them back to Syria. They're not okay, allowed wait. to do that according to I'm Israel. so confused. Like, there were so refugees. Like, like, impact is not as You can't just isolate one group of refugees and be like, oh, this is the one that's convenient okay. for us so, in the round. So, it's going to be this so, group. The idea is they're going to let in 15,000 refugees. International law states that when a refugee comes to your border, you're not allowed to deport them back to the country. That's not true. No, because, because, okay, no, they, they, they deport isn't. them back. They they can deport them back to Morocco. But right now, what Spain is doing, and I wish we'd gotten to this earlier on, but they've set up strict borderlines, so the refugees physically can't get to Spain anymore. Spain doesn't want it. Late to bring up this response, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. I wish y'all had talked about this earlier. Yeah, the fact that they can't deport them back to their own country. But okay, yeah. but so, we've we've been on this. Um, yeah. For so really can long I time. have a question? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Okay. 
let's talk about like this EU membership stuff, yeah, right? Yeah. So can Catalonia like get this de facto membership yes. if the EU doesn't agree to it? Uh, it they don't need 100% agreement for that, that's correct. Like, why, like, what do you mean they don't need 100%? That's, that's what the big part is. Like, no. But the rules to join the EU is that you have to have a membership. It's not an official membership. It's like, it's, yeah, it's an informal membership. So what does de facto membership mean? Okay, basically what de facto membership means is that the EU, like, formally still recognizes Catalonia as a part of Spain and treats them as if they are a part of Spain. So they're not well, independent? Wait, no. Well, let them finish. While at the same time, Catalonia is technically independent, the EU would just treat them like but they the are still in Spain. But the EU has to agree to this, right? No. Wait, how are you going to have to have the EU as a whole? Sorry, the EU as a whole. Not every yes. country. Like, there's no vote for the pact. So the EU as a whole has to agree to vote. Like, not every country. The president like, of the EU. Oh, exactly. Okay, like, cool. Like, the EU has to agree. Cool. Yeah, and um, I don't remember. Okay, okay. okay. You got so a I actually want to. I actually want to ask how you guys keep, why do you guys keep bringing up this BBC evidence when it literally says okay. Catalonia, can I finish, yeah. Catalonia declaring independence, which right. is not even what the resolution is talking about. I would argue that the BBC evidence does say a declaration of independence. Versus but Hedgehog, which is specific to the resolution. But it doesn't change that the internal reward is that France is the one who incurs their own interests. But France has not agreed to the fact of membership. Yeah. Like, it doesn't Yeah, matter. hold on. But France is like one of the most powerful countries in the European Union. And we've already shown you why the wait, union as a whole. Also, wait, wait, even wait, if wait, France wait, wait, wait. didn't, like, even if you don't need France, like, France would be more concerned with France? the European Union collapsing as a result of a debt crisis than they are about this. No, no, France is yeah. more concerned about their political Short-term mass economic harm during that are way more than the next recession in the future. You have any other countries that are going to disagree except for France. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's going to be Catalonia and Catalonia. Yeah. It's going to be econ. Uh, EU collapse and EU defense and then refugees. Everybody ready? They drop SML, which says that when you affirm you create 71,000 jobs, that outweighs the number of jobs that they were talking about. That's really important because it links to their mortality set. It's never responded to in the round. But then two really important pieces of defense that also function as a risk of offense for us. The first is Spain, or the Spanish collapse, which is totally mishandled in the round. Necessarily, when you negate, Spain collapses in 20 years. It means all their economic impacts get triggered. However, you vote out on a risk of solvency. What Spangler finds is that if you affirm right now, Catalonia has a chance to get out from Spain, they can lower their dependence on Spain, and there's a risk that Catalonia persists. In their world, both countries go down, but in our world, Catalonia can survive. But then they also drop near because then in the long term succession is inevitable. What that means is that also their economic harms and all their harms in case are non unique. But when you affirm, you allow for a bilateral velvet divorce, which minimizes the harms at best. It's still not as bad as in their world. Then go to the EU collapse. This is where you're voting for us. Bench, they never engage with this. Bench, of course, says that the EU is going to collapse because of, because of structural deficits. The only risk that the EU stays alive, as per Verifacus, is accepting Catalonia's independence. That's really important because if the EU collapses, which it will in their world, all their economic the economic harms get magnified by a factor of 28. That's the biggest impact in the round. You vote for us on magnitude because in their world there's no reason to vote for them when EU and Spain collapses, but when you affirm there's a risk of keeping both afloat. Then on the EU, realize that de facto membership solves back in the end term because the EU would just uh, consider Catalonia still part of Spain, but also, this is really important, what Izzy alludes to in Grand Crossfire is the hedge co-evidence. When it comes to a battle of cards, you prefer the card that's actually analyzing the situation the resolution calls for if Spain were to grant Catalonia the independence, hedge co says they would be able to stay in the EU, but even if they don't, the EU's collapsing, you still affirm. But let's take a step back. There's been a lot of nebulous impacts on the ground, but one thing is certain, that's refugees. AL Monitor says that they already have all public services and infrastructure ready to take them. Palmer says that they can take refugees tomorrow. That's really important because they've literally already passed a law that they would accept them. It's not a harm for Catalonia to do this. They've already spent the money. Economics do not control the internal link. You affirm, you pull trigger for the app, and tomorrow, 15,000 refugees get a second chance at life. That's really important. There's 100% probability on this impact. Even if they tell you they're going to be living in poverty, living in poverty in Catalonia is much better than dying in a refugee camp somewhere else. Start off on refugees, they drop two really important attacks. The first is from Miguel, who tells you, see, you knows a pro-refugee party is about to be elected, meaning that Spain is about to accept more refugees. This is really problematic because the New York Times tells you that even if the Catalan government passed this resolution saying they could accept refugees tomorrow, they literally don't have the border security to vet all these refugees. You prefer Miguel because Miguel tells you that it would be a lot, take a lot shorter time than Catalonia setting up these borders. That's really problematic because when the point of the economy is the internal link, even if Catalonia has all this infrastructure, if they literally don't have food aid and medical aid, they literally can't feed these refugees. But then he tries to blow up the impact, realize these refugees are coming from Italy and Greece and an EU relocation program means they wouldn't be able to go to Catalonia if Catalonia is not part of the EU. That's really problematic. Let's go into the independent office. He says Jennifer never responds to it. The thing is, Jennifer does. He tries to extend that the Spain, Spanish economy would collapse. But the warrant that the card gives is that Spain's, demo, de, Spain's demographics and its aging population mean it will collapse. But Jennifer tells you that because of the demographics, that means Catalonia's population is also aging because Catalonia is literally part of Spain, meaning Catalonia will also collapse under their, uh, their logic. But then he tells you that Catalonia is going to create 
71,000 jobs. Her problem is Jennifer responds to this again in summary when she tells you you literally can't invest in public infrastructure if you don't have the money to invest in it in the first place. That's when Lister tells you that FDI is going to go down by 75%, meaning that Catalonia literally will not have the money to build all of this infrastructure. Let's go on to EU. He tells you that Hedgeco says that Spain, with Spain's approval, they can stay in the EU. The problem is Hedgeco fails to consider other countries like France. He's only doing an analysis of Spain. France, which is a country that has internal dissensions, movements, prioritizes its political unity over the economic unity of the EU. That's really important. Then their card never says the EU is going to collapse. It just says the EU can't create a federal union. But second, realize that for default pacto membership to happen, they concede in crossfire, but the EU has to agree to it. Realize how powerful France is. It's almost the de facto leader of the EU. At that point, if France doesn't agree to it, they don't get access to de facto membership anyways. That's really problematic because the point where Spain is also losing tax revenue and for $16 billion on debt. That's really problematic because we're to unemployment. That's really going to be really problematic. Here's the way. They literally can't quantify to you how many refugees are coming because they have no idea how many refugees directly come from Syria to, to Spain. What we tell you is that when you increase unemployment, you literally don't have access to medical resources, meaning you're 279% more likely to die if you're a man and 107% more likely to die if you're a woman. This should be the biggest impact in the day now. Brown, you negate.